Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So for those who are new here, my name is Nicole. I'm now a third year teacher who is slowly but surely getting ready for the school year. So I've had so many new subscribers join the family and I'm so blessed and so happy that y'all are here for the adventures. But I realized you're probably like, who is this person on the screen? Like, we know her, but like, we don't really know her. So I'm gonna dedicate our adventure today by just getting to know me and what I value, what I cherish, what I do with all my time. So if y'all wanna see that and get to know me as Nicole, then just keep watching. I'm alive and I'm breathing, living my best life. Love is on my mind. So I figured I would do this by doing a get ready with me and then I'll answer some questions. So first off, Celsius. <laughs> I had a cup of coffee earlier, but I need more caffeine in my life. Y'all, I would literally, I kid you not, I would drink about three to four cups of coffee a day. No, I, probably, no, I think I drink more because I would have one while getting ready, one while driving to school. I would make one at school. And then depending on how my day went, I think I had one in the afternoon or one at lunch. So I had about four to five cups of coffee. Obviously that's not good for you in any way shape or form and I do not advise that whatsoever. So I guess the first thing I will start with is hello my name is Nicole Todd. I have lived in the state of Texas pretty much my whole entire life but I was not born in Texas. I was actually born in Valdosta, Georgia and then my parents moved me here to Texas. But no I lived here my whole entire life. Um, I went to Tarleton State University which if you don't know where that is, it's a very small town that's growing really big. It is west of Fort Worth area. So it's like 45 minutes away from Fort Worth. It's dubbed the cowboy capital of the world. So I went to a little honky tonk little town. <laughs> but I love Tarleton, you know, it helped me find my boys. I was part of like different organizations there and I just, I loved it. Like if you do research about Tarleton, you'll understand why I love it so much. Just because it's quirky, it's perfect, like it's perfect in my view. Like it was not that far away from home, but it was far enough. And then just the traditions and the values that they uphold, like I loved it with my whole entire heart. Like if you are a Texas kid, please look into going into Tarleton because it changed my life, but for the better. But, so when I went to Tarleton, I knew I wanted to be an educator, hands down. I knew since I was a young girl that I wanted to be an educator. So when I went, I went through their program for fourth grade math and science. Okay, fast forward a couple of years when we have to take all of our um, tests before we graduate. So you have to take certification test um, before you graduate or before you go into student teaching, excuse me. So you have to take your PPR, which is your pedagogy professional responsibilities, your ESL, which is your English second language, and then your content. Now they've added another test, which is your STR, Science of Teaching Reading. When I went through, they didn't have it, but they added it to it. So when I had to take my test, I obviously had to take it separately, but now they'll pair it together. But I also think the test have changed a lot like I don't think it's the same test as before but that's a-okay so I obviously was rocking and rolling through all of um that and then it came to my last semester before I had a student teach and let's be real I was focusing on other things than teaching and um didn't pass my last certification test. I passed my PPR, I passed my ESL, but my content was the thing I did not pass and I was not able to go on to student teach. So I had two options. Either I could postpone my graduation another year to have the chance to retake the test, but I only had two more tries after that to take the test and actually pass it before I couldn't do it anymore. Or I could drop and go general studies. I didn't want to postpone my graduation date because I just was not plausible. So I went general studies. I didn't know what to do with my life. I thought, you know, teaching maybe wasn't for me. Like I thought it was, but then I think I thought like I just lost my confidence and I just didn't want to do it anymore. So then I went to a diabetic supply store where people would call in and I would su help supply with them with their new order of. Uh, desk calm like stuff like that y'all 
<laughs> I can never complain about teaching because that job literally sucked the life out of me. Sucked the life out of me. I hated it. I was in training for about two weeks and then I was on the floor actually taking calls and helping people for four days. I didn't even make it to Friday. I called in, I'm like, ah, I'm sick. And I was applying to like all of these um, eight positions and I finally got a call, interviewed. By that Sunday, I had a job. So I quit and like I had begged my now husband, then fiance, if, if I could take like a shot of a ghost pepper hot sauce, if he would allow me to quit. I was close. He did not allow me to do that because he knew my stomach was not gonna agree with it. But I can't complain about teaching because I had that job and that job really put my mind into the set that like I was meant to do teaching. I was meant to be helping other people and especially helping our future. Like these students are our future. Yes, is it a complicated job? Sometimes, of course, you're gonna run into that in any situation you have with a job or in life. But like, it is 100% your mindset. I had a job that I really hated and really pushed me to be an educator. So um, I got the job as a paraprofessional for a self-contained sped classroom for seventh and eighth graders. And let me tell you, that was a job that set me up for success because y'all, those sped teachers have a heart of gold and patience. Like that was a challenging job, but it was the most rewarding job I possibly could have had. You know, like those kids truly taught me how to think quickly on my feet. They really taught me how to modify my instruction. They taught me patience. They taught me how to talk. Like they taught me so stinking much and I owe them a lot, a lot. I Fast forward to me currently getting my certified dream job as a certified teacher. I am loving it. It has been so amazing. Like I can't tell y'all how excited I am that I'm actually a teacher. Like each year I go into my classroom, I'm like, holy cow, like hard work and determination really does pay off, really does. But somebody did comment, um, which no hate to them, like you are entitled to your own opinion but somebody called me saying that I was gonna get burned out within like the next couple of years. And I'm like, you can't get burned out on something that you love. Like, I I know my limits, I do. I learned my limits my first year of teaching because I was really tired. I wasn't burned out, but I was definitely tired that year because I was exerting so much more into teaching than I really should have. And that's a-okay, like you just have to find your balance and it takes time to find that balance. But I don't think I will get burned out because I learned how to balance my time that year. That was the year that I learned how to balance my time. And ever since then, I know how to balance my time very correctly. Like I said this to somebody in one of my comments, but the reason how I know how to set my time correctly is because I create a do list. I do all the things that are mandatory. I do the things that I kind of want to do if I have time for it. And then I have like ideas for, um, you know, upcoming things I want to do if it obviously is present. So I have three lists that are all on one page and it's just three columns. And that's how I pretty much guide my time into making sure I'm not spending it on stuff that I don't need to. Cause y'all as first year teachers, if you are a first year teacher, listen here, do not worry your first year about trying to do the cutie stuff. Learn the content, learn how to do classroom management and just get a feel for teaching in itself. If you do the cutesy stuff your first year, you will get tired and you will get tired really fast. Now, if you have an amazing support team within and out of the classroom and you feel like you can do it, go for it. Don't let others tell you what you can and cannot do. For my, for me, I necessarily didn't have that support to where I could do all the cutesy stuff. I did do it, but I was very tired. So that's just my little two cents. You can take it or you can not listen to me. I'm just saying a lot of people don't listen to me, so it's okay. Okay, so let's continue on. I also want to talk about classroom management. Cause let's be real, they don't teach you really how to do that. <laughs> they don't. They think of every single scenario as a perfect situation, perfect classroom kind of thing. And like, I do understand the mindset behind that because like 
every classroom is going to be different wherever you walk in. Not every single classroom is going to be the same. People are going to have different teaching styles. People are going to have different classroom management, whatever. Okay. So you really need to find a classroom management that works for your classroom. And guess what? It's not going to be the same each year. Unfortunately, it is not. So my first year of teaching, I saw another teacher do this where she cut out individual like square boxes with a letter in each box and it spelled out talking with an exclamation point. And that teacher gave the kids like three warnings and then she took a letter down. Um, gave the kids another three warnings, took another letter down. So I did that and I told the kids, I'm like, if you can have the eye up by the end of the week, I will give y'all a prize, whatever prize I feel necessary for that week. I feel like that style worked the first year that I was teaching. Um, the kids liked it. You know, I wasn't really as consistent with it as I wished I was, but I mean, it worked. Like, what are some things I wish I knew as a first year? Like, if you have any tips for first year teachers or just for teachers in general, comment down below. Like, let's help out our community so much. Instead of tearing each other down, let's boost them up. So if you have any tricks or tips or anything that you think will be helpful, please comment down below because y'all, y'all are my biggest my biggest supporters like y'all caught my recess mistake on my um one of my drawers i for some reason spelled recess wrong and google never caught that so thank you for that but then also y'all gave me some really good ideas and i like love the fact that we're sharing all of this because it just helps everybody to be a better teacher and i, I love it so take everything with a grain of salt you know the people who truly know you are going to be your biggest cheerleaders pretty much and people who probably don't really know you are going to be the ones who are going to try to tear you down because they're jealous of something that you have. So always just take something with a grain of salt. When you feel like you're getting flustered, step back from what you're doing. Take some time to recoup because it is so important for teachers to focus on themselves to make sure that they can give their 100% in the classroom. And you know, there's times where we really can't and it's important to have that open communication. Just find the positives. Keep rocking and rolling because you all are absolutely amazing. Just know that there is a community out here that is willing to support you in a heartbeat. You know, do you have people who you don't even realize has your back? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end off our adventure here. Hopefully you got to know me a little bit more, but I'm so excited to keep taking y'all on our adventures of teaching and my personal life and all of that. So if y'all like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can join our little family. But I love y'all so much and I can't wait till our next adventure. Bye guys!